straight into it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I honor you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for grace. We thank you for mercy. Father, today, let our eyes of understanding be enlightened as we rightly divide your word of truth, that we may come to the knowledge of truth, Lord. Eyes enlightened, let our eyes be filled with so much light, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your word that is forever established, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you praise. I pray for everybody that is under the sound of my voice, Lord. I declare and I decree, Lord. Father, meet them at their point of need. Let yokes be broken, burdens destroyed, lives liberated through your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For you have sent forth your word to heal them all. I declare anyone that is trusting you for healing, Lord, let there be a manifestation of that which you have already done. I give you thanks. I give you praise in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. As we rightly divide your word of truth, Lord, let us come to the knowledge of truth. In the name of Jesus, let the earth be flooded with your glory, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Ah, La Rosia. Thank you, sir. I've seen the uh, GoFundMe, and I'll encourage people as they come in to just kindly uh, show you love. Praise God. Like I said, I don't want to take too much of your time because we are going to be here for some time. Today we are going to be here for some time. So be ready to learn, unlearn, and relearn because I'm going to be giving quite a lot of scripture. And I encourage you to have your notebooks, notepads, wherever you write your notes so that um, you can always go back to the scriptures that I give. Don't be that person that will just hear something and be quick to, oh, no. I'll give you scripture. Go back. Pray about it. Pray in the spirit. Read it again. Pray in the spirit. Read again. Pray in the spirit. You'll get the answers. Praise God. So let's get straight into it. Uh, praise God. I think you see that the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Mm, today is going to be something else. So just make sure you let somebody know that we are live. Make sure. Make sure. Make sure that you let somebody know that we are live and life is flowing through the airwaves. Praise God. Hallelujah. Right. Second Corinthians. I'm going to be giving quite a lot of scriptures. So please have your notebooks, notepads. Be writing notes. I'll be giving quite a lot of them. Today, we're going to be here for time. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 6. The Bible declares... Let's go to verse number 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5, so that we understand the pretext. Know that we are sufficient. Okay, such, verse 4, such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we have, uh, we have sufficient in ourselves to claim anything is coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God. Who has made us, who has made us, sufficient to be ministers of the new covenant he has made us to be able ministers pay attention it's very important if you miss this you will not understand anything that i'll be sharing he has made us sufficient ministers of the new testament he was specific able ministers sufficient ministers of the new testament so you have to understand this because what i'll be saying if you fail to understand what i'm saying now everything that i'll say it will be like you'll have a lot of questions but i think what i'll do next week i'll, I'll have uh, just a broadcast for just questions and answers so that we help each other for we are able ministers of the new covenant not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter kills but the spirit gives life we are able ministers not of the letter but of the new testament of the spirit for the spirit gives life the letter killeth so god has made us able ministers sufficient ministers of the new 
Testament, of which, remember, the New Testament is in his blood. Not of the Old Testament. We are not ministers of the Old Testament. We are ministers of the New Testament. I did not say that. It's in your Bible. Now, look at um, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 to 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 15 to 16. And how from a childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, Hagios Graphe, which are able to make you wise. So the scriptures are written, they are able, the sacred writings, Hagios Graphe, they are able to make you wise in the subject matter of salvation. To make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, all scripture is breathed out by God and it's profitable. When he's talking about all scripture, he's talking about Genesis to Malachi. Genesis to Malachi are the scriptures. Okay? All scripture is breathed out by God and it is profitable. So the scriptures, they are profitable for what? For teaching. For reproof. That word reproof is for our evidence. All right? For correction. So the scriptures are given for correction. Okay? For correction and for training in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. The scriptures refers to the Old Testament. The New Testament is the revelation of the mystery. Now look at John. Look at uh, John. Look at John, John, John chapter 145, John chapter 1 verse 45, John chapter 1 verse number 45. And uh, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Right? Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, meaning all of the writings of Moses all the writings of the prophets were pointers to Jesus. Because Nathaniel is saying, we have found him of whom Moses wrote about, the prophets wrote about. We have found the person that was written about, that is Jesus. The prophets, they wrote about him. Whether they wrote about him in shadows, whether they wrote about him in types, but we have found the substance, not the shadow. Not the type, but we have found him of whom Moses was communicating. The prophets were communicating in the Old Testament. Now we have found that person. The symbols that were used were an attempt to unveil Christ. Okay, so unless you know him. You can never know you because your identity is in him. That's why the Bible says, as he is, so are we. So for you to know him, no, for you to know you, you have to know you. Unless Christ is unveiled, the believer is still in darkness. You don't know who you are. You don't know what you possess. You don't know what you carry. You don't know what you are able of doing. Okay? So... When Christ is unveiled, the believer is revealed because your identity is in Christ as he is. So are we. So for you to know what you can do, for you to know what you have, what you possess, you got to know him because what he can do, you can do. What he has, you have. So is Philip said, we have, Nathaniel said, we have found him, not it. We have found him, not it, of whom Moses wrote about. Moses wrote using symbols, shadows, the manner. It was, it was Christ that was being communi communicated. So now he said, we have found him. All right. So you have to understand. Now when the Bible says we are able ministers of the New Testament, we are sufficient ministers of the New Testament. So... The ministry that we have is the ministry of the New Testament. 
Why is it that the ministry that we have is the ministry of the New Testament? Hebrews chapter 8 verse number 6. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6. Hebrews 8 verse number 6. Praise God. But as it is Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old as the covenant. He mediates is better since it is enacted on better promises. The new covenant is better because Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant. So we have been made able ministers of the new testament. Okay? Able ministers of the new testament. Now look at verse number 7 to 10. I like verse 7 to 10. For if that first covenant had had for if that first covenant had been faultless there would have no been no occasion to look for a second so if the first one was good there was no need for the second for the new rather but because the old was was faultless no it falls so they needed to be a new one if the old was perfect, there was no need for a second, a new one. So watch this. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion to look for a second. Watch this. Verse number eight. For he finds fault with them when he says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers. Watch this. Not like the covenant I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. So the New Testament, the, the Old Testament begins in Exodus. Genesis is not the Old Testament. Genesis is the beginning. So the Exodus is the the new, the Old Testament. He says, when I made a covenant with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, that was the, that's the beginning of the Old Testament. So what is Genesis? Genesis is the beginning. It's not the Old Testament. For they did not continue in my covenant, and so I showed no concern for them, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. And for after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds. Now, pay attention. The covenant that was there before was faulty. It was a fault-finding covenant. Then Jesus comes on the scene. Brings a new covenant, a new testament in his blood. Because the old one was faulty. Now watch this. So the old covenant killeth, but the new gives life. But the spirit gives life. Now pay attention. The letter killeth but the spirit giveth life so if you are preaching the old testament you are if you are preaching the old testament it is the letter that killeth remember all scripture is breathed by god it's profitable for what for teaching for reproof, our evidence. For doctrine. For righteousness. That the man of God may be fully equipped. Perfect. Now, Galatians chapter 1 verse number 6. Galatians chapter 1. I'm laying a foundation here. Today we are teaching. I'm not even preaching. Don't even uh, start with me. Galatians chapter 1 verse number 6. Galatians 1 verse number 6. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> This is Paul speaking to the church in uh, Galatians. 
He says, I am astonished that you are so quickly, watch this, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and turning into a different gospel. Meaning, the grace of Christ is the gospel. Paul is saying, I am astonished. I am in shock that you have turned away from the grace of God because the gospel is the grace of Christ. So if you are not preaching the grace, you are not preaching the gospel. The grace of Christ is the gospel. So if you are not preaching the grace of God, you are not preaching the gospel. So Paul is saying, I am astonished that you are quick to desert you have turned away from the grace of Christ to another gospel. So any gospel that is not the grace of God is another gospel. It is not the gospel. The Bible says you are saved by grace. You are saved by grace. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the grace of God. You are saved by grace, but you want to live by works. This is Paul. He said, you are saved by grace. But you want to live by works. So Paul is saying, I am astonished. I am surprised. I am shocked that how is it that you are saved by grace, but you want to live by works. The letter killeth. But the Spirit giveth life. Now, watch this. Verse number 7 is key. Look at verse number 7 of the same book. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. So anybody that is preaching not the grace of God is troubling you. You are being troubled. By people that are preaching the letter. You are being troubled. There are some that trouble you. So, if you are preaching, if you are not preaching the grace, you are not preaching the gospel. I did not say that. It is written. If you are not preaching the grace, you are not preaching the gospel. So now, do you know that most heresies, most heresies are backed up by some Old Testament scriptures. Most heresies are backed up by some Old Testament scriptures. People will get a scripture from the Old Testament and then they back up what they are saying, their agenda with a scripture from the Old Testament. Yet Jesus says, we have been made able ministers of the New Testament testament not the old i know you're saying oh, but so are we saying that we should uh, abort the old testament no i did not say let's abort the old testament the old testament is written for our learning philip findeth nathaniel and said we have found him of whom we have found him the person not it so when you are reading the old testament you use the New Testament for your understanding. Because the Old Testament were shadows, types, metaphors, symbols. So heresies, they come from... Heresies, they come from... Old Testament... You know, teachings that are backed up by Old Testament scriptures. Every witch in your village must die. They back it up with Old Testament scripture. Suffer ye not a witch to live. But you see, they back up. So heresies, they come from preachings from, that are backed up by Old Testament scriptures. Yet the Bible says we have been made able ministers of the New Testament. I want you to see what Jesus would say in regards to that. Look at Jesus in the book of John. Enoch, it is good to see you, sir. God bless you. Enoch, I mean, uh, John, 
John 16. Now you see, I'm now saying Enoch. <laughs> John chapter 16, verse 12. Let's see what Jesus says. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. I have many things that I want to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Meaning that the things that I told you are not the things that I wanted to say. The things that I told you, they are not the real things that I wanted to say. But remember, the Bible declares that when he spoke, he spoke in parables. Ah, okay. Before we get there, look at verse 618. He says, when the spirit of truth comes, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. Oh, he will not speak on his own authority. He will not speak on his own authority. When the spirit comes, when the spirit of truth comes, he will not speak of his own. I have many things that I want to say to you, but I cannot say them now. Why? Because you don't have capacity. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will tell you, he will lead you into all truth. What I needed to say, because I speak in parables. Now, Look at Mark 4, verse 34. Mark chapter 4, verse 34. Mark chapter 4, verse 34. Mark 4, verse 34. Watch this. The Bible says, Ye did not speak to them without a parable. Jesus, in the Gospels, everything that Jesus did and said was in parables. In the Gospels. Remember, the Gospels are written that you may believe. The epistles, they are written to those that believe that they may know. So the Bible says, Jesus, nothing that he said, he did not speak to them with, without a parable. Meaning parables are for unbelievers. So I can't be teaching you parables. Parables are for unbelievers. That's why Paul would say, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that is not ashamed of the gospel, rightly dividing the word of truth, being able to separate shadows, parables, and giving you the substance. Jesus spake in parables because he was speaking to unbelievers because they did not have capacity. But he says, when the spirit of truth comes, Parables are for unbelievers, for they did not have the capacity, meaning what did they not have? They did not have the spirit. But when the spirit comes, he, the spirit, will teach you, will lead you, guide you into all truth. The gospels are written that you might believe, while the epistles are written that you may know because you have believed. Look at John 16. Look at John 16, verse 13. John chapter 16, verse number 13. John chapter 16, verse 13. Praise God. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will, watch this, for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. When the spirit of truth, when the spirit of truth. So the message of the church is not the Holy Spirit. You hear people saying, oh, the Holy Spirit conference. What are you teaching? The message of the church is not the Holy Spirit. Or oh, let me say that so that it gets into your, into your head. Because I know religion has messed you up. The message of the church is not the Holy Spirit. The message of the church is Jesus Christ. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. But the scriptures, they are there that testify of me. Okay? I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them up. When the spirit of truth comes, what will the spirit of truth do? The Holy Spirit. He will speak of me. So the role of the Holy... The, the ministry of the church is... The, the, the message of the church is not the Holy Spirit. 
The message of the church is Jesus Christ. But when, when you receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. He will point you to Jesus. He will not speak of himself. He will speak of Jesus. The message of the church is Jesus, not the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit conference. What are you teaching? The Holy Spirit knows that my role is not of me for you to know me. My role is for me to lead you to him. We have found him to lead you to Christ. So the role of the Holy Spirit is to lead you to Christ. The message of the church is not the Holy Spirit. I know. Right now you're like, whoa. whoa. Yeah. That's why I give you a lot of scripture. We are not here to teach about the Holy Spirit. We are here to teach about Jesus Christ. But the role of the Holy Spirit is to teach us about Jesus. When he comes, he will not speak of himself. If he is not speaking of himself, you why are you speaking on him? On, behalf, on his behalf. What are you saying about him? <laughs> I know. It can be confusing. You look, you're shocked. I know. I know. The message of the church is not the Holy Spirit. The message of the church is Jesus Christ. But the role of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus Christ to us. When he comes, he will not speak of himself. He will speak of me. So the role of the Holy Spirit is to speak of Jesus. So the role of the Holy Spirit in you is to reveal Christ to you. He does not speak of himself. So where do you get what you are saying? So you teach. We teach the role. We teach you about the role. The role of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Christ to you. Look at verse 14 of that same chapter. Look at verse 14. Ye will glorify me. This is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will glorify me, not me. Jesus. For he will take what is mine, the role of the Holy Spirit, will take what is Jesus, sees, and declares it to you. So what Jesus has the role of the Holy Spirit is to reveal it to you that what Jesus has, you have. What Jesus can do, you can do. That's the role of the Holy Spirit. So the message of the church is not the Holy Spirit. The message of the church is Christ. And the role of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Christ. He will not speak of himself, but he will speak of me because the message, I am the message. I am the reason of the writings of Moses. I am the reason of the writing of the prophets. For Jesus is the message of the scriptures. Look at verse number 15. Stay there in John. Verse 15. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I say that ye will take what is mine and declare it to you. Ye will, who? Referring to the Holy Spirit, ye will take what is mine and declare it to you and give it to you. So the message of the church is the epistles. The revealed knowledge. Paul constantly prays. Let the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That you may know. That you may know. It is in the knowing. It is not the feeling. It is in the knowing, not a feeling. So, the message of the church is the epistles. After the Holy Spirit took and showed up. Because it says, when the Spirit of truth comes... So in the epistles, the spirit of truth has come. And the spirit of truth is in your inside. So the message of the church is the epistles. When the spirit of truth had come. I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. And, but when the spirit of truth comes, and the spirit of truth comes in the epistles. In the gospels, the spirit of truth had not come. Because the spirit of truth came upon his death, burial, and his resurrection. He says that I will go. So his going, his ascension was his coming back. So the ministry, the, the, the message of the church is the epistles upon his ascension when he gave us the Holy Spirit. Are you getting this? Are you? Don't worry. I know you've got too many questions right now. You're like, whoa, be patient. As I continue to teach, your answers will be answered. Now, let's go back to Galatians. 
There's something that they, we need to deal with in Galatians. Galatians chapter 1 verse 7. Galatians 1 7. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. So the, gos the, the, the gospel of Christ is the grace of God. So if anybody is not preaching the grace of God, they are troubling you. They want to distort the gospel. Now you have people that are troublers. They are troubling you. Question, how are they troubling you? Now Christians cannot travel without bottles of oil. That's idolatry. Galatians says, but you begin in the spirit. All oh, foolish Galatians. How is it that you begin in the spirit? Now you want to be perfected in the flesh. Paul is astonished. Paul is in shock. How is it that you, you, were, you, were, you were saved by grace? The message of Jesus Christ is the message of grace, is the gospel of grace. That Now that you've been saved by grace, you want to be perfected by the flesh. So there are some that trouble you. Now you can't even go anywhere without a bottle of oil. Idolatry. You can't go anywhere without souls. Were you born by works or were you born by grace? Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Those are the ones that are troubling you. You were born again by faith. So what do you do? And the Bible says, and the just shall live by faith. So we live by faith. You are born by faith. You live by faith. You continue in faith. You, don't, you are not born by faith. But you are not born by grace in, faith, in Christ Jesus through faith. And then you live by works. The just shall live by faith. So I don't need symbols. I don't need oils. I don't need salts. I don't need mantles. Oh, today I'm going to punish mantles. All this, your handkerchiefs, nonsense. Because people have failed to rightly divide the word of truth. I don't need those things. I live by faith. I live by faith. The just shall live by faith. We are saved by grace. So, how is it that you have been saved by grace, but now you have been perfected by the flesh? Colossians. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6. Colossians 2 verse 6. Colossians chapter 2 verse number 6. Colossians chapter 2. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus, the Lord. Watch this. So walk in him. You received him by faith. So you walk in him by what? By faith. <laughs> oh God, I love Colossians. Rooted and built up in him. Established in the faith. Just as you were taught abounding in thanksgiving. The same way you received him by faith. You walk in him by faith. Not by works. So how did you receive him? Ephesians. How did you receive him? Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7 to 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7 to 9. So that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, not works. It is the gift of God. That's how you are saved. It is not your own doing. It is by his grace. Look at Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Acts 20, verse 32. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Praise God. And now I command you to God. Watch this. And to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those that are sanctified. The, the word of his grace, the message of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the gospel of grace. 
so that when the message of grace is preached to you, you are able to stand. It gives you the ability to be a partaker of the inheritance for the saints. Yeah, the saints is not like people that have died. Because people say, oh, he was a saint. Saint John, Saint this. No, saints does not mean the people that have gone. Mm -mm. Saints means believers. You as the saints. So until the message of the grace is preached, the church cannot be built up. What is the message of grace? The message of grace is the message of Jesus Christ. That's why we have too many infants. Too many infants in the body of Christ. Too many babes in the body of Christ that still need pampas. They still need pampas. We have many that want to, to feel. You pray for somebody, say, but men of God, give me something. They're still babes. They are born again, yes, but they are still babes. That's why Paul said, when I came to you, I spoke to you as babes. They still need pampas. I need something. Men of God, you, can, you cannot just pray for me. You have to give me something. Give me something. You want something. Give me a mantle or something. Give me oil or something. Babes. Say, so I am astonished of how you begin in faith, now you want to be perfected in the flesh. Yet the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Latona, it is good to see you. Praise God. God bless you. Look at Colossians again. Go back to Colossians chapter 2. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. Colossians 2 verse number 7. Colossians 2 verse number 7. The Bible says, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. You are established where? In the faith. Just as you were taught, abounded in thanksgiving. So you were born again by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. So you live by faith in Christ Jesus, not by works. Do this, then God will do that. Do this, those are works. The letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. We have been made able ministers of the New Testament. Sufficient ministers of the New Testament. So now the question is, but how do I live now? How do I live this life? How do I live this life? That's the question you should be asking. How then do I live this life? So that's a question that you should ask. How can people grow? Question. How can people grow spiritually? When every time they are gathered, you are always throwing them down. Throwing people down. Rolling people, rolling. Yeah, yeah, crying and rolling. How will people grow spiritually if you are always throwing them down? Uh, gosh. Look at Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. <clears throat> this is upon his ascension. He gave some apostles. He gave some apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry. So the role of the pastors, apostles, is to teach. Not to be rolling people on the ground, making people fall and vomit. And the, How will they grow? I know right now you're saying, oh, but men of God, so are you saying that people fall in? Uh, wait, stay there. Today I'm going to teach, but in my teaching, I'm going to punish the devil. Today you will thank yourself for joining this broadcast. You will thank yourself. I'll be teaching while punishing the devil. All this rolling and how will people grow? Every time, people fall in. You go to church, you've learned nothing. All you know is you've just been falling and getting up and falling. And when you get up, nothing has changed. Don't worry. I'm going to punish the devil in a very subtle way. And I'm going to punish him. A minister that cannot 
teach sound doctrine should step aside. A minister that cannot teach because upon his uh, ascension, he gave some apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists for the equipping of the saints, our saints equipped teaching. So if you can't teach, oh, I can't teach, man. I'm not called to teach. I'm a prophet. Uh, a step aside. I'm going to deal with, oh my God, today, today, I really want to deal and I want to punish the devil to the next level. And this punishment, uh, the devil will feel it for, for many years to come. <laughs> or for eternity, he will feel it. That hmm, it was on that day I was punished. I'm going to punish him. Now watch this. Jesus says, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? He said, Lord, I love you. He said, feed my sheep. That feed my sheep is teach my sheep. Teach my sheep. He said, feed my sheep. Feeding is teaching. Now watch this. Imagine a student. A student goes to university. <clears throat> a student goes to university. Yeah? He has no knowledge. But he's got... Um, he's got his dream that I want to be a lawyer. Whatever, whatever, whatever you want to be. He goes to college. University, rather. He gets there, there is the tutor. He's there. The tutor is not a believer. The tutor is an unbeliever. Break time, the tutor will go outside. He's smoking and whatever. During the week, he's busy drinking, gallivanting and all that. But he will come... And teach you that is born again, born of the spirit, tongues speaking. He will teach you about the law. The tutor is an unbeliever. He does not even speak in tongues. He can't even see a frog in the Bible. But he will come and teach you a believer. The one with Christ that resides in them. The one that declares things and they manifest. But an unbeliever who does not even speak in tongues, will come and teach you. And after three years, you are honored with an honorarial degree in law. What happened? Transformation took place by teaching. Transformation took place by teaching. Yet yeah, this man is not a believer. He does not speak in tongues. He can't even see a frog in the Bible. Yet you, you have your pastor, Tongue speaking. Oh yeah, he goes in change gears in tongues. Changing of gears. But your life has not transformed. Yet an unbeliever is teaching somebody law. After three years, that person is graduating with honorarium. Transformation by teaching. Anointing. Anointing is not falling down. Religion has told you that when you see people falling down, it is the anointing. God punish the devil. Falling down is not the anointing. Did you hear that? Religion. Today I'm punishing the devil. And this message, I know after this message, many people will unfollow me. Let me tell you this in advance. I don't care. I'm not here to make friends. I am on a mission to preach the gospel of his grace. The gospel that saves. For Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection was not in vain. It was not for us to come and make people fall and, and vomit all over the place. Anointing is not falling down. Anointing is Christ in a person. Not falling down. Look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 26. God punished the devil. Colossians 1 verse 26. Yara dos yagoja. Colossians 1 verse 26 to 27. Ha <laughs> ha. Colossians 1 verse 26 to 27. The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. The mystery that was hidden. The mystery. Okay, let's go to verse 25 for pretext. 
of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. My assignment is to make the word of God fully known, not to make friends. The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make them known great among the Gentiles. And the riches of his glory, of his mystery, which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Do you know that the, 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 when you hear people saying, I am anointed. Christ only said that once. I am anointed is not is not found in the epistles. Hello. The Bible says, "For the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for Jesus, for God has anointed me." That is the only time you would see Jesus saying that I am anointed. I am anointed. Jesus, nowhere else. The only time you see that Jesus saying that, he says, when the, uh, the, uh, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for, the, for God has anointed me. That is the only time you hear that. In the New Testament, we don't say I am anointed. Hello? I know, religion. Today, we're going to punish the devil. We can't be calling Christians anointed. It is in the Old Testament, not the New Testament. In the Old Testament, they were anointed. Remember, the Spirit would come upon them and they would do the work of ministry and the Spirit departs because they did not have capacity. In the New Testament, we don't say, I am anointed. Remember, anointing is not falling down. Anointing is Christ in a person. In the New Testament, the only person that called anointed was Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. In the New Testament, we are called believers. Because a believer has believed in Christ. And when you believe in Christ, he resides in you. Christ, Christos, the anointed and his anointing is now in your inside. So you don't say, I am anointed. You are a believer because you have the anointing and his anointing. You have the anointer and his anointing. Christos, anointing and his anointing. The anointer and his anointing. Old Testament, they were anointed because they did not have capacity so the and spirit would come upon them. They'll prophesy. They'll do this and this. And the spirit would depart. It did not stay on them. So they were anointed for something. A believer, you are not anointed. You are a believer. Because you have the anointing. You have the anointer and his anointing. Christos. I know religion is messing you. So I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. That's Old Testament. Jesus himself. The only time you would see himself saying I'm anointed. It's Jesus. He said, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For, for, for God has anointed me. Remember he was still. It was transitional. From the old to the new. The anointing is Christ. A person. Look at John, 1 John. Like I said, I want to punish the devil today. 1 John. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. Watch this. Verse 27. But the anointing that you received, you received, what did you receive? You received Jesus. So what did you receive? You received the anointing. Because Jesus Christ is Christos, the anointed and his anointing. So the anointing that you received from him abides in you. And you need no one to teach you or should teach you. The anointing is Christ. He abides in you. So by his presence in you, you are anointed. By his presence in you, you are anointed by default. 
So we don't say you are anointed. We say you are a believer because a believer has the anointing. It's like you going to a car. You go into a car, a car show, car show, whatever, wherever you buy cars, wherever. And you say, I want the, the body of this car and the engine of this car. You don't say I want the body and then I want the engine and then I want the tires and then I want uh, the steering wheel and I want the brakes and I want the, the lights. No, you don't say that, do you? When you go, you say, I want the car. When you get the car, the car comes with the engine. It comes with the lights. It comes with the brakes. So when you receive Jesus, what you have received is his anointing. So you don't get, when you receive Jesus, you have received the spirit. You don't now go and look for the spirit. When you receive Jesus, you have received wisdom. You don't now go and look in for wisdom. Because Jesus is the power and the wisdom of God. So when you receive Christ, you have received power. When you receive Christ, you have received anointing. You don't now go start looking for, for, for power somewhere. Jesus is the power of God. So when you receive Jesus, you have received power. When you receive Jesus, you have received anointing. When you receive Jesus, you have received life. When you receive Jesus, you have been justified. You have been sanctified. So you don't now go looking. You can't go and buy a car and then now say, now uh, make sure you put the, 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 the seats the steering and the brakes you buy a car it comes with it when you receive jesus everything that the father has he has given to me and i give them to you but when the spirit of truth comes he will show you these things he will declare what is in me to you so when you receive jesus you have received everything you don't start looking now oh now i need to look for power you don't look for power jesus is the power of god so when you receive jesus you have received the power when you receive Jesus, you have received the light. I am the light. I am the way. When you receive him, you will never walk in darkness. When you receive him, you don't now start looking for outward um, assistance, anointing oils, uh, salts, uh, mantles, and all that. No, when you have received Jesus, you have received the mantle. Dorcas, it is good to see you. God bless you. The anointing is Christ who abides in you. So by his presence in you, you are anointed. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Remember, the anointing that you have received. So anointing does not go. When you hear somebody say, oh yeah, the anointing has left this man. No. Anointing does not leave. Anointing is a person. That is Jesus Christ. When you have received him, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never. He said, ah, these days the anointing is gone. Uh -uh. Old Testament people, the anointing would go, not New Testament. You are born of the Spirit. How can you be unborn? Say, you are unborn, I'm born again. So please go and unborn me. The anointing that you received is a person, it's not a bottle. And he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Who will never leave you nor forsake you? Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? The anointed and his anointing. Oh. The anointing does not leave. He abides in you. <laughs> Whether you know it or you don't. He abides in you. Even if you make mistakes, he's still there. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. David prophesied, even if I made my bed in hell, thou art with me. He was prophesying. What was he prophesying? That I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even in the waters, I will be with you. So even when you, are, when you are messing about, when you are doing what you are not meant to be doing, don't think that the anointing will leave. It's still there. The anointing, the Holy Spirit is not a, 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 a wayfair a friend that will come when things are okay, when things are bad, he leaves. No, he's still there. Do you know how I know that? The time you do something wrong, you get to a point and say, mm, but what I did, I feel bad. It's wrong. It is the Holy Spirit that is convicting you. If you did not have the Holy Spirit, you'll be all over the place. You'll keep on carrying on, carry on, carry on. 
but because of the Holy Spirit, you will be like, no, what you did is not right. You he will convict you. David prophesied, even if I made my bed in hell, thou art with me. Hi! This is David prophesying. That even if I made my bed in hell, meaning even if I make my mistakes, even in my mistakes, you are with me. But religion will tell you that when you make a mistake, the anointing has left you. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Now watch this. The anointing does not leave you. All this business of, of giving people handkerchiefs, misquoting scripture. Ah, watch this. People misquote scripture. People giving, here yeah, they say, I'm giving you mantles. Jesus is the mantle. When you receive Jesus, you have the mantle. All these handkerchiefs where you're thinking that Paul was giving out handkerchiefs, Paul never gave anybody a handkerchief. Now, let me show you that religion had messed you up. Religion made you to read something that was not there. Paul never gave anybody a handkerchief. Because that's a scripture that is used. But Paul was giving out handkerchiefs. And now you people are sowing seeds for handkerchiefs in church. We don't even know where that handkerchief was and whatever way it was. Paul never gave handkerchiefs. I know right now you're like, no. Paul was giving handkerchiefs. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Wait there. Cool down. Relax. Where are you reading from? Or did you even read it? Or you heard some pastor who was trying to manipulate you into sowing seeds in handkerchiefs? Watch this. Let me punish the devil. Acts chapter 19. Acts 19 verse 11 to 12. Pay attention. JT, it is good to see you, man of God. It is good to see you. It is good to see you. Now watch this. Okay? You said Paul was giving mantles. Handkerchiefs. Now listen to this. Pay attention. Every time somebody is preaching something, please make sure you write these scriptures down. Go back and read again. Because people are, that's why people are misled. I give you something. Take the scripture. Go back, read. Pray in tongues. Read again. Pray in tongues. And then you come with an answer. Don't just say, oh yeah, but my man of God said. Because the Bible says, follow me as I follow Christ. Ah, you understand the context of that i can't be following some of these pastors no i'm, I'm not doing that i'm not <laughs> i'm not doing that now watch this acts 19 verse 11 to 12 because we want to deal with this uh, uh poor giving handkerchiefs you people are given handkerchiefs in church as mantles because paul was given handkerchiefs way in the bible it's a lie you did not read well. That's why the Bible says, take heed of what you hear. How did you read? How did you ginosko? Now watch this. Stay there. <laughs> Acts 19 verse 11. And God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. So that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched his skin... So it was people that came with the handkerchiefs. It was not Pete Paul that was giving them. People would touch him with the handkerchiefs and aprons. Not that Paul was giving handkerchiefs or aprons. People came to him, touched him, made contact with him. Not that Pete Paul was giving out handkerchiefs. Oh. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were carried away to the sick and their diseases left them and the, dev, de, the evil spirits came out of them. It was people that went and touched him. But understand what was happening. It said, And God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin. It was not him giving. People came, touched him. And that only happened once. That means it's not a doctrine. That happened once and that is not a doctrine. People sowing seeds of handkerchiefs. 
It's not a doctrine. That happened once. My bishop, uh, Joseph, it is good to see you, sir. That happened once. It's not a doctrine. Making doctrines out of something that happened once. Now, it was not a doctrine. Right. So we should build the church on him. On him, not on things. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Oh, God help me to help your people. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse number uh, Verse 5. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 5. Watch this. So that your faith might not rest. Your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Temba, it is good to see you. Yvonne, it is good to see you. That your faith should not rest in the wisdom of God. Your faith should not be in oils. Your faith should not be in bottles of holy water. Your faith should not rest in mantles, handkerchiefs. Your faith should rest in the power of God. It's in your Bible. But you, your faith is rested. You can't go anywhere without salt or uh, anointing or some, some handkerchief somewhere. You can't go anywhere without those things. Idolatry. We have idolatry in church. Your faith should not rest in, on the wisdom of men. Your faith should not rest on all, all these symbols. Never. It's in your Bible. I did not say it. Let me read it again. It says, so that your faith... Okay, let's go pretext. My God, I love pretext. This is Paul. Watch this. Pretext. Verse number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse, from verse number 2. Watch this. For I decided to know nothing among you except Christ Jesus, him crucified. This is Paul. When he came to the church in Corinth, he said, I don't want to know anything else. I don't want to know about how to make it. I don't want to know about 10 steps to success. I don't want to know about that. I just want to know about Christ and him crucified. Because the gospel is a caruso, a specific message, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Paul is saying, I don't want to know. Now watch this. Except Christ crucified. And I was with you in, in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my speech, my speech and my message were not in possible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So that, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Your faith should not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So what does that mean? Your faith should not rest in things. Your faith should rest in him, not things. You go for an interview. You have a bottle of oil. You're going for this. You have a bottle of oil. You're going for this. You have holy water. You spray yourself. Let your faith not rest on the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Going back to Galatians, he said, I am a shocked, astonished. That how is it that you started in the faith, but now you are being perfected in the flesh? Who has bewitched you? Christ, the wisdom of God. And the power of God. Now, <coughs> back to Galatians. <clears throat> God punished the devil. Back to Galatians. Galatians chapter 1. This message is that I preach. I, I will not have friends. I don't care. I told you. I'm not here to make friends. Galatians chapter 1 verse number 7 says, Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. They are, they are troublers. When everything is imitation, no one will know the difference. You can only know the difference when the, the truth comes in between. You can only know the original when the truth shows up. Remember, now, this is the part that, <clears throat> this, this now is the part that many people will unfollow me with immediate effect. Guess what? Like I said before, I really don't care. And I pray that you will unfollow me after you have heard this, what I'm about to say. Please, listen to what I'm about to say, then unfollow me. 
So you can't unlisten. That's the that's the good thing. I will have said it, you can't un unhear it. <laughs> so listen to this and then leave. Listen and then go. And then unfollow me. But you can't unhear what I'm about to say. Miracles are not a validation of God. Miracles, they are not a validation of God. My goodness gracious, I want to punish the devil right now. Miracles, they are not a validation. Just because you have seen a miracle in church does not validate that God is in is in the mist. I remember some people would go to church, certain churches, because they have seen miracles that have been put on social media nicely, nicely on YouTube. Said, my God, the miracles that are happening, this, this is where I'm going. Miracles, they are not a validation of God. Watch this. Are you ready? After this, unfollow me. <laughs> Second Thessalonians, my goodness gracious. Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse number 9. Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse number 9. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so to be saved. The devil does miracles, face false miracles. It's in your Bible. Lying wonders. He does miracles. The devil, it's in your Bible. He does miracles. So, miracles are not a validation that God is in that place. Jesus said what? Look at Matthew. <clears throat> Look at Matthew. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay there for a bit. I want to punish the devil. Because people think that when they see miracles, God is in that place. And you hear people say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to punish that. In two minutes, stay there. Look at what Jesus says in Matthew 16. God punished the devil. Matthew 16, verse number 4. Look at what Jesus says. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no one, no, but none, none sh sh sign shall be given to them except the sign of Jonah. Why the sign of Jonah? The death, the burial, and the resurrection. An evil generation. So if you are after miracles from one church to another for looking for miracles, I did not say it. Jesus said you are an evil generation. You are evil. So if you are a pastor that focuses on miracles, you are an evil pastor. I did not say it. Jesus said it. If you have a problem, go to Jesus. He said it in Matthew 16 verse 4. That you are an evil generation looking for signs. So people who run around looking for signs are evil people. And people that will focus on miracles and signs are evil pastors. I did not say it. Take it up with Jesus. You have a problem? I did not say it. Take it up with Jesus. Matthew 16, 4, he says it. In evil generation. So if your pastor focuses on signs and wonders, it's all miracle, miracle Sunday, miracle Sunday, miracle Sunday, miracle Sunday. Evil pastor. I did not say it. Your Bible says it's an evil generation. They seek for signs and wonders. The message of Christ is the message. Paul calls it the gospel. The Bible says, Oh God, should I say this? Okay, before I say it, let me take you to 1 Corinthians. I'm going to stay there. In a few minutes, I'm going to undo a lot of nonsense. I'm going to come back to that because somebody says, yeah, so are you saying that miracles? Are you saying that? I know you. Religion. Today, my preaching is going to remove that your religion cap. <laughs> Whether you like it, it is... Oh, Gibaro Diasuja. Now watch this. <clears throat> Praise God. God punished the devil. <laughs> First Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. First Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand. So the gospel that is being preached, that is the ability to make you stand. Watch this. And by which you are being saved, it is the ability to save you. If you hold fast, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you. You see, he's now giving you the caruso of the gospel. The specifics of the gospel. I delivered first of importance. That 
I also received that Christ died for our sins. That Christ died for our sins. I like Temba by saying that that's the truth, man of God. Churches are like circus. So guess what? <clears throat> if a clown goes into a kingdom, in a palace, that that clown does not become a king, but that that palace becomes a circus. <laughs> now. Nah. For I delivered to you first of importance that I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and that he raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. That is the caruso of the gospel. That is the gospel that saves. That is the gospel. That is the ability to what? To make you stand. Why? Because Jesus' prophecy was given by Isaiah that a, 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 child, a, a, a child shall be born. A son shall be given. He shall come to save his people. The reason for Jesus coming is to save people. Okay. So that was the keruso, the specific of the gospel. Now watch this. Now pay attention. Mark 16. Mark 16 verse. Woo, verse 15 to 20. Mark chapter 16 verse 15 to 20. Mark 16, 15 to 20. And he said to them, go into the world and proclaim. That word proclaim is to teach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes is baptized and will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. All these signs. So believers, we don't look around for signs. Signs, they follow us. If you look around, going around looking for signs, you are an evil generation. Signs will follow them that believe. You are a sign, you are a wonder. Wherever you are, signs and wonders shall, will follow you. You don't have to be looking for them, they will follow you. Watch this. All these signs will accompany them, those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents in their hands. And if they, are, if they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them. It will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. You don't look for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders, they follow you. If you look for signs and wonders, you are an ayalaladia. Evil generation. He did not say, go and, 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 and have a miracle crusade. No. Go and proclaim the gospel. So it is in the preaching of the gospel where signs and wonders will take place. He did not say, go and have a miracle crusade. That is not the message. I know right now. You're like, so are you trying to say that we should not have a miracle crusade? I'm not saying that. Jesus is saying that, not me. Go and have a, 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 you hear it, it's going to be a prophetic and deliverance and, and a healing service. No, sir. You preach the gospel of Christ, the gospel that saves. As you are preaching the gospel, your words will be accompanied with signs and wonders. It's not like we're having a miracle crusade. No, we preach the gospel. Miracles happen in the crusades. Miracle happen in the church. Miracle happens as I'm preaching the gospel. That is what Jesus said. Go ye therefore, proclaim the gospel to whoever that believes is saved. Whoever that does not believe is condemned. These signs will follow you as you proclaim the gospel. Signs and wonders, miracles, healing will take place as you preach the gospel. So what is it? The caruso, the specifics of the gospel is go and preach. He did not say go and have a miracle crusade. Go and preach in that crusade. As you preach in that crusade, miracles will take place. I did not say that. Don't come here and uh, be angry with me. Even if you're angry, I don't care. Hello? I don't. Be angry with Jesus. It's Jesus that said that. Go back to Galatians. <laughs> We are dealing with Galatians. Go back to Galatians. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 now. <clears throat> 6 to 8. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 to 8. Why? I am astonished that you are so you are so quickly deserting him who called you into the grace of Christ. So the message of Jesus Christ is the grace. And you have turned into a different gospel. You have turned into a different gospel. Not that there is another one but they are some who trouble you that means there are no other gospels there is only the gospel one gospel not many gospels one gospel 
But there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel. Some who trouble. Now watch this. But even if, watch this, even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel that is contrary to the one we preached to you, let him be accursed. That word accursed, disconnect. Even when angels, Paul said, even if an angel came from heaven, if they preach a different gospel than that which we preached, which is the gospel that Christ was crucified, he was buried and rose on the third day, that is the gospel. If they preach anything that is not that, let him be accursed. Even if an angel coming from heaven preaches any other gospel that is contrary to what we preached, don't listen. Let them be a case. Disconnect. Now pay attention. Now you. You hear that people that will say, I went to heaven. Huh? I was in heaven. I spoke to God. God gave me a message. Pay attention. I went to heaven. Ooh. God gave me a message for the church. Now they have a message. But before you tell us your message, let's look at those that have gone to heaven. Let's hear what they said. Let's look at Paul. Okay? Okay. Before I say what I want to say, we have to look at the ones that went to heaven, right? 2 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 12, verse 2 to 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2 to 4. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. And he had things, pay attention, he had things that cannot be told. Which men may not utter. You cannot, okay, he had things that he cannot be that cannot be told and which men may not utter paul is saying hey with my experience my my out of body experience the place i was in what i saw my english cannot explain i cannot say it then you you Okoro from Onini village. You come and say, Oh, I was in heaven. God said this. Oga, that your your fallacy and your whatever you are you need to get checked. You might be suffering from malaria or something. Paul is saying the things I saw, I could not, I cannot even speak. Now, pay attention. This is very important. The glories of eternity cannot be explained. That's why God gave us tongues. You, you come and say, God said, yeah. You see, now you see, see these people that go to heaven. <clears throat> they come with nonsense. Oh, I was in heaven. God said, this season, oh my God, oh my God. They become emotional. Playing with your emotions. Oh God. Say this year. Mm. Ooh, this year, God, what God is doing. Oh my God. I can't even. Oh, la They come. They become emotional. Playing with your emotions. This year, God told me. I was in heaven. I was in heaven. They start crying. Manipulators. God told me that this season, every seed that you have sown, hi, 
there's going to be a manifestation. What a life from the pit of hell. You had nothing. Come here, you talk nonsense. Paul is saying, I went to heaven. The glories of, of eternity. I could not explain them. I, I don't even know. You, you come, you have a specific message. It has to do with money. They have to sow a seed for this season. God said it is the season of your uplifting, the sacrificial seed that you're going to give. Oh God, it's like there is a door that is being opened for you. What a lie from the pit of hell. Lying, using emotions. You people like emotions. Emotions. It's the same thing. I'm going to deal with this falling. This falling. Yeah, I told you the anointing is not falling. I'm going to deal with that in two minutes. When you go back to Galatians chapter 1, verse 8, there was a double emphasis. He said, Let there be a cast. If any man, he repeated it in verse number 8. He repeated it, double mention. That shows you how important it was. If any man will come, not even an angel, preaches any message that we did not preach, let him be a cast. Double emphasis. So there is no message. In the New Testament called, you hear people say, God told me that this year we are going to destroy altars. There is no message of altars in the New Testament. Remember, Jesus has made us able ministers of the New Testament, sufficient ministers of the New Testament. You hear people coming up with, uh, oh yeah, this year we are going to destroy altars. What altars? What altars? There are no altars in the New Testament. We are able ministers of the New Testament. Altars, an altar is a place of animal sacrifice. An altar, if you did not know. An altar is a place of animal sacrifice. And that was in the Old Testament. And Jesus is our animal. And he was sacrificed once and for all. And that's it. He, 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 has, he has done away with altars. Like I said, people will take an Old Testament scripture, will back up what they are saying. They take an Old Testament scripture. That has not been rightly divided. The, the letter kill it. But the spirit give it life. They back themselves up with scriptures from the Old Testament to push their agenda, destroying altars. There are no altars in the New Testament. An altar is a place of animal sacrifice and Jesus is our animal. So the appearance of Jesus abolished all these things of altars once and for all. Altar versus altar is not a message. What is the message? The message, the grace of God. The preaching of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That is the message, the caruso. The specific gospel. Altar versus altar is not a message. Breaking altars, breaking platters is not a message. It's a way to manipulate you to take money from you. I give you scripture. Don't argue with me. Go back, read. Read what scriptures I give you. Read them and read them again. Pray in the spirit and read them again. Pray in the spirit and read them again. Because religion, it's it, to undo that. When Christ rose from the dead, he rose as our high priest. So the priests in the Old Testament, uh -uh, they are done with. He's our high priest. Our mediator, the one that stands, mediates on our behalf. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That wrestling is not, is not fighting. We wrestle not against flesh. The wrestling there is not a fight. It's not a fight. The wrestle is in the mind. What are you wrestling? The devil is bringing something. He said, you did this, you did that, you did this, you are sick. So the wrestling is in the mind. You now imposing what Christ has already done. The devil said, you are sick, said, I am healed. That's the wrestling. You are imposing what Christ has already done. We're not, we don't wrestle like this. It's the enforcement of what we have already obtained. Victory in Christ Jesus. Maintaining what has been obtained. How do you do that? How do you maintain what has already been won? How do you do that? You resist the devil. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. How do you resist the devil? By, by saying what you believe in and by continuously saying it. 
He says this, you continually say what Christ has already done. You obtained victory. That is how you resist the devil. You don't resist the devil. Say, oh, yeah. Therefore, I resist you. No. You resist the devil with, his, with the word. You keep saying what God has said over your life. They said you will not make it. You say, you lied. I will make it. I have made it in Christ Jesus. They said, oh yeah, we, they see death coming in your family. I see they want to kill you. You said, you lied. My life is hid in Christ Jesus. I am seated far above principalities. That is the wrestling whereby you are enforcing what Christ has already done. It's not a fight. We are not called into a fight. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It is you imposing what Christ has already obtained. Don't be fooled by people saying, oh yeah, we, this, we are wrestling. No, 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 no. That wrestling is not fighting. It's enforcing what has already been obtained. Our victory is in Christ Jesus. God punished the devil. By standing in faith, you resist the devil. By saying what you believe in and you keep saying it. You keep believing it. You keep saying it. You might be feeling pain in your body, but you keep believing, you keep saying it. My body has been healed. I am healed of the Lord. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead resides in my inner body. It will vitalize. My body is being vitalized. You are still feeling pain. You keep believing it. You keep saying it. My, by my spirit, the spirit of God in me will vitalize my mortal body. That's how you resist the devil. That's how you resist the devil. You keep saying it. That's how you resist and you will flee because you keep saying it. I am blessed of the Lord. I am blessed. I am loved. I am justified. I am acquitted. I am sanctified. I am the righteousness of God. I am blessed beyond measure. My life is in Christ Jesus. You keep saying it. You keep saying it. The devil keeps throwing whatever. You keep saying it. That's how you resist the devil. You keep saying it. So we fight. When the Bible says we fight the good fight of faith now, that fight of faith is not a fight again. We are fighting for faith. No. Again, it's enforcing what I have already received. So I'm standing on what I believe in. That is the good fight of faith. S keep standing on what I believe in. I keep saying it. My God. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Hey. I want to finish, but today um, I'm going to push a bit more. Second Corinthians chapter 4, <clears throat> verse number 18, praise God. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. So what is happening? We don't look at the pain that I'm seeing. I look at the things that are unseen, my healing. For the things that we see, they are transient. They are not permanent. But the things that are unseen are eternal. So we don't look at the things that are seen. I am seeing a, 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 I'm seeing a mountain before me. But I don't see the mountain. I see what is beyond the mountain. This mountain shall be plain. Not by might, not by power. But by my spirit, saith the Lord. The things that we see are transient. They are subject to change. But the things that are unseen are eternal. So you keep saying it. You keep believing it. You keep saying it. Keep speaking it. Look at Luke 21. <clears throat> Luke 21, 15. Luke 21, 15. Luke 21, verse number 15. Luke 21, verse number 15. But for I will give you a mouth and wisdom. Which none of your adversaries will be able to stand or contradict. This is Jesus. He's saying, I will give you a mouth. I have given you words, 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 words. Which your adversaries, your, the enemy, sickness, lack, poverty, affliction, cannot stand or contradict. I have given you words. What do you do with the words? Speak them. You speak it. You keep speaking it. You keep speaking it. No matter what you're going through, you keep speaking it. I have given you a mouth that your adversaries will not contradict. You keep saying it. You keep speaking it. Power is in your mouth. You keep speaking it. Power is in your mouth. Christ in you. It is settled. So when people call, 
The name of Jesus. Now, I want to deal with this, then I close. <clears throat> when people call the name of Jesus, because we're dealing with, I, when, remember I said that miracles, they are not a validation of Christ, of God, rather. So somebody who says, in the name of Jesus, receive your miracle, and the miracle happens, it is not, you, it, you have to pay attention. Because the devil does lying wonders. But where you are confused, where you are confused is because the name of Jesus has been used. The name of Jesus, with many of these, they are using the name of Jesus as a cover-up. My God, this is too much. The name of Jesus, with most of them, they are using it as a cover-up. Did you know that? It's not everybody that says in the name of Jesus. Hey, it's with Jesus. The name of Jesus has been used as a cover-up. I know somebody says, ah, but you can't do that because this is the name of Jesus. The name that is above every other name. So, so, the, uh, so, so you would think that if anybody mentions the name of Jesus, they are with Jesus. They are not with Jesus. I will give you scripture. And this one, I will read with you slowly so that it gets here. So that your eyes of understanding be enlightened. Don't be deceived by somebody doing miracles. Don't be deceived by somebody calling the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus has been used by many as a cover-up. God punish the devil. Now pay attention. Second Corinthians chapter 11. I want to read this slowly. So that you know that when they mention the name of Jesus... You have to check which Jesus. Check which Jesus. Many people, they call, in the name of Jesus, receive. And then people, bleh, 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 bleh. which Jesus? Which Jesus? But, see that, but hey, he said, in the name of Jesus. And then people were falling. Hey, hey, which Jesus? Which spirit? Second Corinthians. God punish the devil. Now I want to punish the devil. Second Corinthians. I'm giving you scripture. So don't come here and say he's just saying anyhow. I'm giving you scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 4. God punished the devil. Now watch this. For if someone comes, if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus, that means there's another Jesus. Hello? There is another Jesus. And proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaim. That means there is another Jesus that is being proclaimed that is not the same Jesus that Paul proclaimed. So somebody shouting the name of Jesus that not, does not validate that he's, he's with us, he's with, he's with of God. No. I'll show you how to check and balance which, which Jesus. I'll show you through scripture. Don't worry. I give you scripture. I don't just come here and talk anyhow. If someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you receive, that means another Jesus comes with another spirit. So when somebody says, in the name of Jesus, and people fall, and you think it is the Holy Spirit, hey, 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 it is not the Holy Spirit. Because if there is another Jesus that is being used as a cover-up, when people are slain in the spirit, you have to check which spirit is it. Because another Jesus comes with another spirit. I did not say that. It's your Bible. Watch this. If anyone you receive a different spirit from another, for, from the one you received, if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it readily enough. That means there is another gospel that has another Jesus, that has another spirit. So miracles, they are not a validation of the presence of God. Miracles, even the devil does miracles, lying wonders. So an, another gospel comes with another Jesus. Another Jesus comes with another spirit. So when people are falling, don't think that it is the spirit of God. Not always. You got to check. Another spirit. So people are being slain, falling and rolling. That is happening because of another spirit. But you are deceived because they use the name of Jesus as a cover. In the name of Jesus, as a cover. 
Yet it's another Jesus. That is not the same Jesus that we preached. So how do you know? Question. So men of God, how do we know? So the only way that you can know which Jesus is being preached is the yardstick is doctrine. You use the word of God, doctrine. What was being preached before they called Jesus? What was being preached will determine the Jesus that has been called. Go ye therefore and preach the gospel. What is the gospel? A caruso, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. So what was preached before that? Altar versus altar, altar versus altar. Another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit. So you use the word of God as a yardstick. You don't use, because so-and-so is doing it, so-and-so is doing it, so you use that as a yardstick. Uh -uh. You can be following, copying and copying people that are in heresy. So you use the yardstick, the word of God as a yardstick, the, as doctrine, what has been preached before. So because there is another gospel with another Jesus, with another spirit. You have to understand that there is a difference. There is a difference. There is a difference with Jesus and another Jesus. The gospel and another gospel. The Holy Spirit and another spirit. These are things that you have to understand. Don't be fooled when people say, in the name of Jesus, and people are falling down and rolling, and you think, my God, the power of God. Let, let me tell you, let me show you something. Let me show you something. This falling down, do you know that it's 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 ninety percent of the time people are playing with your emotions. When people touch on something that is emotionally connected to you, I can make you fall. Let me give an example. Somebody is here is, is trusting God for for marriage, for example. And I come and say, My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Ooh. There's an angel that is in this place right now, right now. And he's saying he's touching every woman. Oh, I see five women that are trusting God for marriage. Oh, there's an angel right now. I'm playing with your emotions. Because this is touching, is touching home. And then I'll be like, oh, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing the angel. Right. Oh my God, there's, I'm seeing a wedding gown that has been put on you. Right now, right now, right now. Receive it! Because I've touched something that is dear to you, I play with your emotions, you will fall. So falling is not anointing. I told you this before. So you got to understand, there is another gospel that comes with another Jesus, that comes with another spirit. That other spirit is a spirit of divination. That is the same spirit that many people use for prophesying. They can prophesy of what, 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 what happened before, but they can't prophesy what is ahead of you. What is ahead of you is vague. It's, I'm seeing you. Something will happen. You will be, you, you, yes, you are going, you are, you are breakthrough, breakthrough. Yes, it's coming. But they can go pinpoint of what happened before. Divination. Those are diviners. They can't foretell the future. They can tell what happened. That's why they'll say, oh, I see this in your past. There will be pinpoint, accurate prophecy. Another spirit, diviners. They can't tell what is ahead of you. You have to understand there's a difference between the Old and the New Testament because we're dealing with the letter kill it and the, the spirit give it life. The Old Testament, you have to understand this and then I close. I think I'll close with that because <clears throat> the, the message was going to be, it's, it's, ah, it's, I have to finish it next week. There's a difference between the Old and the New Testament. The Old and the New Testament. There's a difference between the letter and the spirit. The Old Testament is a compilation of shadows, types, prophecies and promises and the new testament is the fulfillment of all of those in christ jesus look at hebrews 10 verse number one i think let me close with this and then i <clears throat> and then i close because it's uh, i will not be able to finish it i'll be here for for long hebrews hebrews chapter 10 verse number one hebrews chapter 10 verse number one praise god i'll finish it next week for since the law was but a shadow watch this since the law was but a shadow of good things to come instead of the true form of these realities it can never buy the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year make perfect those who draw near it so the old testament was a shadow of what was to come so the old testament was a shadow understand this 
The Old Testament was a shadow, shadow, shadow of what was to come. Meaning the law cannot bring you into maturity. The Old Testament, the shadows. Shadows cannot bring a person to maturity. Look at Colossians, then I, I, I close. I'll read Colossians, then I close. Praise God. Colossians chapter 2. <clears throat> yeah, this is long. Uh, I will not be able to finish this because I don't want to rush it. I'll finish next week. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. Let nobody judge you about eating food. Hey, don't eat pork. You hear people talk nonsense. Don't eat pork. The Bible is saying what? Don't let anyone judge you in regards to what you eat, questions of food or drink, or whether regards to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. Yeah? Why should you not allow anyone to judge you? Why? It's in your Bible. Look at the next verse, verse 17. These are a shadow of the things that are to come. These were shadows of things that were to come. These were the shadows of the things that were to come. Now watch this. Verse 17. The shadow of things that were to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. The body of those substances is Christ. So those were shadows. Those were shadows. Those were shadows of things that were to come. Meaning, Jesus Christ is the reality of those shadows. Jesus is the reality of those shadows. Now, I'll close with this. The anointing oil, shadows. Holy waters, shadows. Oils, shadows. Stones, shadows. Water baptism, shadows of what was to come. Holy communion, even though it's not in the Bible. That's a doctrine of Roman Catholic there is no there is no way in the bible that says holy communion again it was a shadow the bread that was being spoken of was his body my body he broke the bread it was in remembrance he did that so that they remember that his body his body was broken for us so bread was symbolic of his body that would be broken Shadows, those were shadows of what was to come. Shadows of what was to come. Water baptism, shadow. Whatever you call Holy Communion was a shadow. So Christianity is not a practice, but a revelation of the person. I think I'll close here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everybody that is under the sound of my voice. I declare and I decree that their eyes of understanding have been enlightened. Father, for those that are trusting you for your healing, Lord, you said it in your word. As the word was preached, healing took place. In the name of Jesus, I declare and I decree, may you meet them at their point of need. May their bodies, by the reason of the spirit that resides in their inside, let their bodies be vitalized. In the name of Jesus. I declare a quickening in their spirits in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that they are trusting you for, Lord, I declare and I decree. Let there be a manifestation of that which you have done already. Whether it is in their businesses, I declare. Let their businesses be touched in the name of Jesus. Whether it is in their families, I declare and I decree. Let their families be blessed in the name of Jesus. I declare this by the authority of Jehovah. Your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. This is not a feeling. This is a knowing. When you come to the place of acknowledging these realities, this truth, you will see the manifestation. Paul wrote to film and said, let the sharing of your faith become effective, if impactful, by acknowledging every good thing that is in you, in Christ Jesus. What is in Christ is what is in you. It's not a feeling, it's a knowing. You have what Christ has. You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. For good works and i declare and i decree may this week be a week filled with what christ has already done for you may the blessing that is already upon your life be made manifest that which you are trusting god for i declare let there be a manifestation whatever you are trusting god for your eyes have been enlightened i declare that your eyes continue to be filled with so much light 
in Jesus' mighty name, my beloved family. I love you so dearly. That is why I have to give you the truth, the undiluted. Have a glorious day. God bless you. Shalom. Love you so much.